Long-time viewers of the channel will know we have historically put off a lot of jobs on this build. From things we don't want to do because it's a terrible job, like thing, anything to do with the loom, or even to, trying to work out how to make the bodywork fit properly, down to things that we just don't know how we're going to do properly. And that includes fitting this gear stick. Now the problem we have with the gear stick is fairly simple. The car this came out of, the TT and indeed the A3 that we started with, are both front engine cars. The engine sits ahead of the driver, this sits between them, between the seats, and the cables shift onto the back of the gearbox. So they snake through the transmission tunnel, go in through a little bracket, and operate the tower. You shift through gears, you move forward, everybody's happy. Unfortunately, we made a fairly cataclysmic change to that system when we moved the engine from in front of the passengers to behind the passengers. So here is the old shifter out of the A3. Here is the bracket that sits on the back of the gearbox. And the cables normally come in on a little bit of an angle. They sweep across because ordinarily they would come down the transmission tunnel, as I mentioned, and sweep across into the back of the gearbox. And it's a fairly tight uh, package with the engine bay and the firewall. So you want it as close in as possible. So it's all designed around the shortest possible distance, keeping this working. So you can see that's forward and backward, left and right. The system works. Now, in order to maintain this geometry coming out of our gear stick, which is mounted, obviously, between the seats forward of the engine, we would have to loop out of the, out of the front of the unit and go all the way around the car. And when I dismantled this previously, that was the plan. Unfortunately, that was going to end up with something between a three and a three and a half meter long cable, or two three to three and a half meter long cables coming all the way around, snaking through the dashboard, over the steering column, down the side, through the side pod, around through the engine bay, underneath the silencer on the back of the car, and then into the gearbox to maintain this angle. And it had to go that way around so that it swept in from this side so that we didn't have a massive kink in the cables. Strictly speaking, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Boats have very long cables in order to operate the rudders, although they don't tend to make such a long sweeping curve. We'd be probably going around almost 300 degrees from coming out at the front, coming all the way around, and going back in again um, across the, the back on this angle. It's probably 280, 290 degrees around the clock face. So potentially there's a lot of bind up that could occur in those cables. So we've been trying to think and work out a better way to do it using shorter cables. Now the problem with doing so is that this whole unit is set up for front exit cables because that's where they were designed to exit on the car. Weird that, isn't it? So, well, this moves across forwards and backwards. Underneath, you have the arm which moves around, which is exactly what I showed you when I dismantled this last time in order to work out how it all fit together to start planning this idea. Now, some people have suggested why not just turn this around and run it that way. That would be fine. In theory, this is completely free moving and wouldn't cause a problem. Unfortunately, the reverse lockout is very much one-sided and will only work in one way around on this. So looking at the underside of the shifter, excuse all the little bits of swarf that will all get cleaned out later. This is first gear, this is third gear, and this is fifth gear as you go across. And then this is second, fourth, and sixth. And this is the reverse lockout. This little piece of plastic, this sort of rubberized plastic that sits on the bottom, won't allow you to engage reverse gear until you're in the neutral position, which is back here and you push down on the stick so that that can get past and around this little molded section. Now if we simply turn this around the other way, this would be reverse over here, all the way across, and you would very, very easily be able to drop into it. And similarly, if you were trying to go for the fifth or sixth, you'd be getting interference. We could just remove this little block and it would probably work, but I really don't like the idea of being able to get into reverse quite so easily. So that is the fundamental problem that we have with the mechanism inside this unit. And there are definitely ways that we could fix this with either an aftermarket shifter, which is expensive, or uh, modifying this much, much more than I'm really comfortable doing. So before we resign ourselves to running extremely long cables out of the front, I want to try and find a way that we can use this shifter with shorter cables, maybe even the existing ones that we have, to run out the back of this unit, in through the front of the, of the engine bay, underneath the firewall, and up into the front of the gearbox. 
Now that obviously presents many, many more issues because all of the shifter tower is designed to be operated from behind as well. So we still have a number of issues to overcome, but this is the first one to, to do because with this in place and the cables attached or a set of cables attached, we can start working out what position we're in in the engine bay to make a linkage that will operate the rest of the gear shift tower. A lot of times in the past we've just kind of waved our hand and gone, we thought about this for a long time and it was very, very complicated and we're not actually explaining a lot of the process that we went through in order to get to the solution that we found to do something. And in this case I don't think that's fair, which is why this episode is all going to be about turning this into something we can hopefully fit onto the car itself and how we can get around the limits of this mechanism whilst not getting in the way of anything that needs to move and ultimately having the cables coming out of the back instead of the front. So here we have the inside of the casing. You can see this is forwards and backwards and obviously this goes through a wide range of motion in a rectangle here and this lever does side to side. And if I put it into reverse, that is the full extent that it needs to get it across and that would be uh, fifth gear so that is sixth fifth and that is reverse all the way across there if I push it down fully so that's the amount of movement that we need to get normally this cable would sit in the back there's a little retainer clip that goes on that operates through there and then when we go left and right you get all of that movement and there's reverse so that's all we need to emulate, but we need it going that direction, not this way. So to start with, I made a new little bushing. So I actually didn't make a little nylon one, hopefully I can reuse this later on, but I used a piece of half inch bar stock and just drilled a hole in it so that it would sit on there and give me what I needed for the time being. Because basically we need to take this motion around the side. We can't come directly out in this line because of the curved shape of the casing on the back of the gear stick. So we have to bring it around and across a bit. Now of course whatever we build has to keep out of the way of the rest of the gear stick movements. So it needs an extension rod that comes far enough back around this square of interference. Which moves across like that. That the um, forwards backwards uh, movement of the gear stick and the side to side exists in. So that means we have a fairly narrow window to get through like that. So in theory a rod added onto the back of here should push along nicely. It will get us well past the back end of this uh, gear selector. So if I put this all the way across that fits through there. Now I could have just drilled a hole directly in the side of this but I wanted something a little bit more solid for the time being and something if I wanted to later I can bore out and put a little bushing in without having to remake too much stuff. And this is what I came up with. Now uh, it's a little bit quick and dirty, it is some 6mm rod welded into the end of the 10mm tube with that uh, half inch boss on the end and I've got a 7mm hole just to give it a little bit of clearance on the back. Now eventually this will be bored out a little bit more and it will have a rubber gasket that fits into it like a grommet so that it fits through. But this just drops on like that with a little bit of wiggling. And there's a little retainer clip that goes on the top but I'm just going to leave that off for the time being. So now you can see this movement from the side has been translated out the back of the box and away and we can deal with that at a later date but for the time being we know we can get this side to side movement out the back of the unit and down onto some other linkage some other cable further down the line so conceptually with that one done we can move on to the next bushing and this has a large spherical center down uh, the uh, mounting point from the gear stick and the bearing basically slips over and clips into that and that allows it to move around as it goes backwards and forwards so it pivots around and also side to side as the gear stick moves left and right. Now because of the distance between the extremes of the throw we're not necessarily going to be able to do the same job as we did before with this so I'm hoping that I can or rather I was hoping that I could use the existing mount point because that has a degree of flexibility built into it so that will hopefully give us enough and you can see on this one I've basically flattened down three of the edges to fit between the mounting points around here and I've drilled the same size hole as this onto this end in the hope that I can use the original mounting point point. Now that has to some degree 
worked out. But what it meant was I had to cut down this unit so that it was a lot shorter than it originally was. So I've actually sliced off, and you can see where I've re-welded the, uh, the bearing end back onto the, the rod that comes on the end of the cable. And as a result, I've also had to shorten this sleeve that comes through into the back of the box. And that means it actually comes out well beyond the end. Fortunately, when it's actually going full throw to full throw, it doesn't get beyond here. So there is not as much throw that will ever allow this to pull out, get stuck and lock in a particular gear, which I'm extremely, extremely glad about. I thought I was going to have to try and re-engineer something again, but it always sits within the tube. So we'll just mount this up and get it working. And that holds it in place. I'm not going to put this all the way on because it is a nightmare to get off and I don't want to fracture this bearing. I had to pull this out, this uh, little bushing, in order to weld it so I didn't just melt it. But even then, it still got a little bit warm when I tacked it the first time just to make sure I had it in the right position. But if we hold that on there, you can see all the way uh, in one direction, all the way out, it doesn't get far enough for that edge to drop out of that sleeve. But the movement works perfectly through there. And assuming this was actually clipped on, it would be enough to get through. Although I have now just noticed that once that's clipped in, that might not actually go all the way down when it is in. What gear is that? That's fifth. You might not actually be able to select fifth. So if we have fourth, but we might not have fifth. And that, that is going to be a problem. And I thought this was going really quite well, but clearly we have a problem. I'm going to have to basically sit down and try and work out a way that I can either modify this so it sits further over, has a little bit more clearance so that the uh, cable comes in at a slight angle, or modify this section at the bottom to move that uh, mount point further across. Because at the moment, we have enough movement to get all of the other gears, including reverse. So even with it sat on top of this mount, instead of being in line, we can still get reverse. We have enough throw across this way, but we don't have enough throw that way. So I think I'm going to have to adjust that mount so that it sits a little bit further across this way. Well, yesterday's success was pretty short-lived once I discovered that the offset was too great to actually get all of the gears. And the problem is fairly well demonstrated here. If this is the back of the box, this is the, the casing at the back here with the hole drilled in, the Bowden tube comes through and it has the cable in the center, and this is the lineup onto the pin on the bottom of the lever. So the gear stick comes all the way down, and then it has this ball on. This is the bushing housing that sits on the back, and this is the stubby end of the rod that I'm going to have left once I separate these two. Now there's about a 10 millimeter offset between the center line of the hole that I've drilled and the center line of the sort of ball bearing on this pivot. Um, when you look at the other end, obviously there is no offset. It's been properly designed, so it's dead straight and there's no issue, and it has all of the flex that you want just in this fitting on the end. And we're using a lot more of that tolerance with this setup than Audi had uh, to play with on the other end, or rather that Audi used, but they had more to play with on the other end. So I think the simplest thing to do is just make a little square which sits between the two, because I only have seven millimeters. So the plan is make a box, or I say a box, um, cut a piece of steel, solid steel, about seven millimeters, and drill two holes in it, one down there, and one down there, and then back weld in through that side, and back weld in through that side. Now I can't weld in through that edge, because we come up right against the edge of this sleeve, but I can weld some of the ring onto the end of this little adapter that I'm going to make, this offset adapter. However, there is still quite a bit of the lever, like this section down here, as it kind of goes down and around underneath, it does get in the way. I took some off earlier, but I think I'm going to have to take more off just to make this fit. So here is the little adapter that I ended up making. Now, uh, this is made out of some angle iron, some uh, steel U-channel, which had a taper on the wall and was already about the right thickness. So it gave me a little bit more material to play with towards the bushing end. So I sliced the bushing holder off the end of the rod and then drilled two holes, six mil each, and then back welded, as I said, in order to join the two together. And then spent some time just shaping this down 
so that it, would, it wouldn't interfere with the bottom of that shifter tower, but I did still have to take off some more of that gear stick. So I've put the side-to-side -side rod uh, adapter back in as well, so just so we can make sure for clarity that it's not going to get in the way of anything that we've done down here. I don't think it would at this point, but it's just good to know. So you can see that still operates nicely that way. And if we go all the way forward on this, it's a little bit stiff. That will clip on there. It will reach all the way across that way and back across here. And I think it will just barely make it and can test by just pulling this back this way and that if i'm looking through the camera at the same time as talking looks like that bushing is still in line with that ball bearing but i'm hoping we'll see before the end of this episode whether or not it actually works but the next thing i want to do before i clip this on properly is try and fit the other cable this one that i've got down here onto the back of this rod around this area so that we have something very, very similar to this using the original equipment. Well, a fresh day reveals a fresh set of things to learn. The first is that this socket actually fits very easily over the pin where the ball joint is. Um, you need to push on the unit, on the, the actual socket itself, and not push on the end of the pin when you're using a pair of channel locks. Then it just pops on really easily and a screwdriver will pop it back off, so uh, TIL. Unfortunately, what I also learned was that this system does not work. There is too much flex required in this joint on the inside edge to be able to get the uh, reversing lock out past this threshold. It just puts far too much strain and it's almost impossible to get it into reverse and once it's in, it's extremely stiff to remove and that will almost certainly fail the IVA as a result. So herein lies the problem. You can see the amount of flex that this joint has, and that's only going through the first to sixth range of motion. Now if you pull it forward, push down on the gear stick, and go into reverse, that's already right at the very edge of the strain that it has available. And then if you push it back, it's only making that angle worse and worse as it comes across. And you've got to really force it to get it all the way back in. And once it's in, that should move a lot easier to get it out of gear. And I'm having to tap that relatively firmly to get it to move around. So unfortunately, this whole thing is a bust. And that means we need to think of a new idea. So even if the stiffness in the gear shift wasn't an IVA failure, it would still feel pretty terrible to drive if you're trying to maneuver it around somewhere. It's not even that it's gonna be really notchy, it's just gonna be difficult to work and to move and if there's a little bit of bind up there by the time we end up putting the other one on this side it might make it even worse so unfortunately as i say this is a bit of a bust and we need to find a new solution fortunately i was at our friend's decimal tenths uh, about a week or so ago and they had a lotus, lotus elise in the shop that was having a 20 valve turbo conversion so I had a quick poke around inside and they just loop the cables straight back out of the front because they were using the original OEM uh, six speed Audi shifter and just looping them straight around and then up around the back of the gearbox. They actually went underneath the sump in the gearbox around and in. And apparently that is the standard way that it is done on the Elise when you put a 20 valve turbo in. So. With that in mind, and the fact that I've now sat in one or had to play around with the gear stick and it feels fine even when it's all buttoned up and, and done, I think that's going to be the better solution. We don't need to go all the way around the driver's side. We can loop around the back and through our transmission, our transmission tunnel um, and come up the back of the gearbox in a relatively conventional way. And that removes a huge number of failure points because we can use the original mounts on here, which we know work. We can use the original mounting and selection system on the gearbox rather than having to make a bell crank arrangement. So it's massively simpler. What we need to do is put a few of these cables in place so that we can test it on the car and just for layout to see how long the cables we need. Because we know we were about three and a half meters when we were going all the way around. So it's got to be less than that. Just as a quick addendum to that, an interesting thing happened whilst I was demonstrating the problem to Chris. And you can see it here. <laughs> the rod is no longer attached to the end of the ball joint where it's welded, putting that flex on to go all the way across into reverse 
has finally fatigued the end of this. So even just to get in reverse where it was really, really tight, it was actually bending this too much and it popped off. So in a way, I'm really glad that happened now rather than after I'd finished putting all of the rest of the work into it. But that definitely leaves us with one singular option. I've reconnected one of the shifter cables onto the gearbox. This is the shorter of the two and it's the one that rotates the shifter unit. I don't know if that's the forward and back or left and right motion on the stick, but it's the one that rotates the shifter unit. Uh, so we've attached that up the other end and we're just looping it around the transmission now, trying to get a feel for where it, not so much where it attaches to, because it's not going to attach, but just how far it gets so that when we measure from the, tr from the shifter back, we know how much like extra length we have to add to the whole system because it's obviously far too short. This is the end of it in my hand just here. Obviously far too short to actually get all the way around to the shifter. So doing the same thing on the other end of the cable. Now we've got another cable mocked up roughly in place with the shifter and we're seeing how far back it comes and we're going to measure the gap in between so that we know how long we've got to go. So we've hooped it around and it comes out to about here. So since we've now confirmed that the cables can actually bend quite tightly without ruining the shifter field, as Aid's already mentioned, we're going to do the easy thing. So we've sent the cables directly out the front of the shifter. We're going to punch a hole in this little pocket on the front here, punch a hole in this plate here, punch a hole in the vertical just behind and underneath it. And then finally, somewhere down in the bottom there on the top of the transmission tunnel, they'll have hooped back enough that we'll be able to punch through there and then send the cables all the way back along the car. And as it turns out, we've measured from the rear bottom corner of the body forward to uh, to where our circlips hook up on here and it's about 70 centimeters inside the cell it's 30 centimeters short on the uh, on the outside so we need to add an extra meter of like the center section this fixed center section where the hard points go to this whole thing now since we're adding this to the length of the original cables we're not like modifying anything we're just using them as measuring things um, they totaled 1.66 meters or 166 centimeters. We're adding almost exactly a meter to that. So we need to get a set of cables that from one circlip mount, you know, one of these hard attachment points to the other is two and two third meters. Seems nice and easy. A lot less than the three and a half meters or three and three quarters we thought for going around the outside as well. So also saves us a bunch, makes the installation easier, saves us having to get anything around where our feet are, wins all round. Well, at least we now know what we're trying to do and how long the cables need to be and the route that they're going to take. A little bit unfortunate that that needed um, some fairly major surgery on the gear shifter itself, but we at least know where we're at. Now, if you want to help us buy some of our gear shift cables or indeed the rebuild kit to rebush this shifter, you can go to patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show where you can join us from as little as a dollar a month, or you can go over to the YouTube memberships and join the channel there. Either of those options will also get you discounts on the merch store, shop.pedalbox.show, where you can buy hats like this and t-shirts and everything else that you need, except probably for trousers. At some point in the future, I'm going to rebuild this with the bushing kit so that it's all nice and smooth. There is some swarf inside it from where I was drilling things out and hogging out the holes. And the only way to get rid of that really is to strip the whole thing down, clean all of the grease out of it, all of the swarf, and get rid of it. Although the swarf doesn't seem to have got into the mechanism as yet particularly badly, but you never know, and I'd rather be safe than sorry. So that will be coming up on a future episode, along with eventually installing this in the car, but there is plenty more work to do in the meantime. So thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next episode.